giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Here we are, folks, the biggest and baddest DCMP in all of first, the original, the greatest, the one. It's time for the Michigan State Championship. Uh, we have the whole Infimidation gang on here tonight to talk about the teams we have our eyes on, uh, who we think might be walking out with culture, just uh, who might surprise us all, what strategy is going to be, talking everything Michigan State Championship here. Reporting for first updates now, I'm PJ. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. I'm Freddie. I'm Nick Jr. And I'm Sky. So uh, first off, we actually are going to have a giveaway later in the show, courtesy of Nick Jr. and 4130. So, uh, Nick, if you want to go ahead and tell us about that briefly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, I'm for, for those of you that don't know, I'm from Team 4130. I'm one of the head coaches. And we are actually uh, got some T-shirts that we're going to give away in honor of MSC this week. So um, later in the show, Tyler will go ahead and bring it up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go on from that. So, PJ, you want to go ahead and take us into it? So All right. Oh, okay. real, real quick, just on giveaways, don't forget we'll have a keyword later on. You do have to make sure you click the follow button if you're interested in winning. Uh, and then if you do choose to subscribe and help support the stream like uh, Cartoffee just did, you'll get five times chance to win. So we'll start that at about 30 after the hour, and we'll be doing the two giveaways later. All right. Thank you to our producer, Tyler. So we're going to start with, uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, we're going to talk we're going to go around the horn, get some quick thoughts on everyone, how uh, broadly we kind of think MSC is going to play out. Uh, from a strategic aspect. So, uh, Mike, what what do you think we're going to be seeing at MSC? So, there's I've seen a lot of chat about the debate between uh, three offense versus two offense and a defender, and I think that all comes down to who's left at the back end of the draft, and it's hard to predict how, how deep these divisions are going to be. Um, so, I, I think that's going to be one of the biggest factors of um, just – if there's bad picks in in the in the back end of the draft, then you can end up with what happened at East Kentwood, right? Where you get some really good robots left over. Um, if there's not, then you're going to see some one seed domination. Um, so, uh, Nick, what do you think? Well, so I think to build on that, I think obviously, yeah, you're right. It depends on how deep the the third round or the second round, I guess, of picking goes. Um, but I think also part of it, I still think we're going to see mostly defense. I think compared to the rest of the world, Michigan's had probably some of the most defense played at their events overall, maybe setting aside East Kentwood for the most part, it's had more defense than other parts of the country. Um, and, and to build on that also, I think at some point it comes down to how many different places are there for three robots to score anyway, because at some point, if, if enough teams are scoring hatches on the cargo ship in Sandstorm, um, you know, we could see as many as four or five hatches scored on the cargo ship in Sandstorm, at which point, you know, if you have null hatches on the other ones, there's only three or four cargo to put in the cargo ship before it's already done. And then at that point, you just have two rockets. And having three robots trying to score on two rockets is going to start to become pretty hard to keep efficient. You know, I think back to like 2011, the, the brewing strategy never really ended up being having three robots scoring. It was usually two and then a defender because it was just too hard and too dense to try to have you know, three robots scoring on those two kind of arrays of, of posts for the inner tubes in 2011. I think this is kind of be a lot of the same thing. And just because of how effective defense has proven to be when it's played really well at some of these Michigan events, I think we'll still see it despite some of these third robots on these top alliances being really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just building on what you said, Nick, um, I always like to call Michigan State Championship a blue collar event. Uh, a lot of gritty, a lot of gritty uh, uh, robot action. I think um, a lot like other years, it's going to be a lot of defense. There's definitely going to be at least one uh, designated defense spot, maybe in a, even in a lot of qualification matches, but definitely in playoffs. So I think this game is going to be decided on two offensive robots, probably cargo ship and a rocket, and then uh, defense after that. Yeah, uh, kind of 
touch base on what Freddie said. Um, I think that we're going to see a lot of rockets completed this weekend. Um, I think they're actually probably going to break on like uh, Mason, you know, what first in Texas did and stuff. But I seriously think that if the divisions get paired up right, and you know, some teams that may you know be maybe great teams like Hot that are getting bounced in quarters or something like that, and we have another DTE like we did last year. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out, Mike, but um, <laughs> just going to throw it out there. No, um, but I think that. If it comes out right, we can get some seriously stacked divisions. And I think Rocket Play is almost just going to become like another, like, okay, you know, we're going to fill the Rocket. No big deal. I think we're going to see ranking scores upwards of three, you know, three and a qu- or three and three quarters, you know, 3.75 around there. And I don't know. I'm just excited. MSC is always a riot. And I'm glad that, you know, I get to be there again. And I, hopefully as fun, we can get some cool uh, footage of it and have a really good show. And let's see what happens. Yeah, so I'm going to jump a little bit away from the defense because we kind of beat that one to death at this point. <laughs> uh, I think there's going to be at least one, maybe two of the fields that go full on three robot, no defense, max overload scoring craziness. Uh, and then hopefully finish up with those climbs. So I think we're definitely going to see a clash in strategies come together. Uh, and it's going to hopefully lead to some really interesting matches. And. Look out, Texas, because there very well could be a situation where uh, Michigan takes that uh, max uh, combined score back. Yeah, I agree. And just speaking of unique strategies, it brings me back to MSC 2017, right, where the engineers put together an alliance that ran a 2 and D strategy that won their division at MSC, which is insane to me. They would get two rotors, and then the nerds would get the 40 KPA, and then they'd play defense. And just nobody else was running that strat. So it it was just, I don't think anybody else ran that strat successfully anywhere else in the world that season. And so, but MSC is where you see places like this. Because Michigan has a lot of very creative people. A lot of very smart strategy people who know to play to their strengths. Um, So I think we're going to see, we have the potential to see some very unique strategies coming on. I think I think the biggest thing to kind of put a spin on the defense, talk a little bit more, is the biggest thing would be, you know, because we've seen this in some other places. I know 2056 has done it a lot. Um, we saw it at Texas last weekend. Is how much do teams decide to do um, a counter defense third robot versus an actual defense robot? Whereas, you know, maybe that counter defense robot isn't really playing offense, but they're kind of playing offense because they're helping the other yeah. their teammate play offense. We've seen it some in Michigan. I'm not sure we've seen it. Um, super effective yet in Michigan, but like I said, you know, like 2056 has done it. Uh, they their first event, I know, I don't remember what event they were at their their first event, but I remember watching them do it repeatedly with even top teams they were playing with. Uh, we're doing we're screening for them, so I feel like maybe we could see that variation on it rather than sending a third edge to play defense. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how effective that can be. Yeah, for sure. So uh, definitely a lot of interesting things to look forward to. Uh, so now we're gonna start talking to robots. So the six of us have put together who we have ranked as the top 10 robots in Michigan going into MSC. Uh, This was sort of, you know, it's a variation of the top 25 where we, uh, it was just the six of us. So we're going to put that up. And it's a lot of teams that you've seen in our top 25. Uh, Our number one pretty unanimously actually was 1918, the NC Gears, followed by uh, we had 33 up there. 54-60, 35-38, 20-54, 37-07, then 20-75, 67, 10-23, and 17-18. So that's kind of our um, expert uh, top 10 in the state coming into MSC. Um, Excuse me. So to begin talking about those teams and how we do it, we're going to sort of start talking about teams, breaking down teams that we're all keeping an eye on, who we think is going to do really well. And so we're going to throw it on over to Nick to begin that discussion for us. All right, yeah. So we're each going to kind of take turns with one team at a time, bringing up different teams that we think could make a big difference since we do not have the divisions yet. Um, so we're going to start with kind of all the teams, at least that we're on, or at least the four of us that are on teams. So uh, I'll start, you know, talking about 33. Um you know, we started off the year uh, at Southfield, where we paired up with 35-38, uh, and we had a, a great run at that event to start the year in week one. Uh, we went on the center line to play with um, 10-25, and that uh, went well for us as well. Um, and then we finished up at Alpina in week five, uh, Alpina two, uh, back with 35-38 again, and continued uh, the win streak to three. So overall, 
uh, I know, you know, as a team, we're, we're feeling pretty good. We've continued to work um, and develop kind of everything we can, lots more practice. Um, and we do actually have a little sneak peek video for Michigan State Championship. If uh, maybe we can pull that up and we can be ready to show that. Um, oh, we'll give we'll give Tyler a minute. Uh, I know he's got to pull that up. But yeah, overall, you know, I don't know what you, if you guys kind of want to chime in on what you think of us. But um... <laughs> if the triple works, no one's going to beat you. I've said that since the beginning of the year. Yeah, I, I, I think the timing on the triple is not going to work out. It's it's going to be it's going to be a problem in the match where it takes too long to line up. It doesn't finish. If it doesn't finish, you're hey, totally done. You can't win the match. Totally with Mike on this one. Uh, there's a reason we didn't see the triple climbs in Einstein last year. Um, timing. I disagree. I, I I think 33 always plays up at the state competition, man. I think they're going to be right in the thick of it. <laughs> yeah, they had quarterfinals exit, winner, quarterfinals exit. <laughs> don't, that means don't time it. for a winner. No, time uh, for a winner. The, the infamous octafinals exit. <laughs> 2016. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think Tyler's got the video ready, so why don't we take a quick look at yeah. that? So it was really, really short, really short. Not much to be shown there. But uh, yeah, so we had some fun at uh, Russia's shop last weekend with uh, Avondale was there and Rush was there. Uh, Mike, you were actually there as well. So, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of fun. I, I wasn't lot of willing to put my robot there, but, you know, <laughs> now that I've seen it work, I might be more willing. <laughs> So we'll see. You know, we're not promising that we're going to use it at Michigan State Championship, but uh, we've continued to do development on it for this entire season. It's been a lot of work. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can have it at, for, for State Championship, and then it'll be really cool to see it pay off, hopefully. So, uh, but Nick, how close are you to max weight right now? <laughs> uh, well, we will be at max weight. <laughs> and you went from 35 to 40 chain, you said. We did, yeah. We updated the chain on the climber. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've continued right. to develop the climber for all of this. Okay. So. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. But, we will uh, see. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing about the timing that you pointed out, though, is I think the way we looked at it is, you know, there's teams doing double climbs, and we don't really see that it will take our alliance much longer to do a triple climb than it would take to do a double climb. Um, and I think that that makes up kind of whatever the point uh, advantage is. So you know, it's hard to tell if it's, if it's a pull payoff or not. And obviously the margin becomes a lot smaller if you're up against double climb yep. lines. So yep. we'll see. Yeah. And then, uh, let's, uh, throw it to Mike because he's been getting a, a little bit of shade in chat. Uh, <laughs> there seems to be a, quite a few people who don't think 67 should be on this top 10 list. So I guess, uh, Mike, now's your turn to defend yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if we should be either. Right. <laughs> we, we, we had the quarterfinals exit at Lincoln that you guys are never going to stop giving me crap about. Um, <laughs> And, and East Kentwood, I mean, we, we went 11-1. and one. We, we seeded third. Um, it, was, it was really tight. It was a missed climb that, that put us um, behind 27-67, which was completely our fault, Broken Robot, um, as far as the second spot. And 54-60 just walked away with it. So uh, I, I don't know. We, we, we have significantly improved since East Kentwood. We've uh, shaved about three seconds off our cycle, which means we can finish a rocket now. And I'm... I'll make that statement. I'm pretty sure we're going to be finishing rockets at, at MSC. Well, 33 um, finish one. That's the real question because they still have yet to do that this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we made our pickup a lot more, our hatch pickup a lot more robust to balls being in the way. Um, we've, we've really tuned vision and made that a lot better. Um, I, and it's just a lot of practice, right? So, so maybe we deserve to be there in the top 10. It doesn't really matter. Um, I, I think interesting fact about 67 is, is since MSC's inception, they've had a silver medal every MSC except 2015. They have not missed either finals or division finals except for 2015, which do we really count that as a game? <laughs> Was that real? <laughs> so maybe, maybe we deserve to be there. I don't know. Um, so Nick, you want to talk about your team? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I'm not no top tier team, so I can't hang with you guys. But um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about my team, and then I'm actually going to go into uh, strike zone. So um, 
not that um, I know that you know my team's still young and stuff, but um, we're getting to the point where um, we're averaging about ten to eleven game pieces right now. Uh, we finally got our new hatch mech uh, working, so instead of us just being a strictly cargo bot and climbing like we were at Go Lake in Marysville, uh, we're getting to the point where we're doing all of the hatches and then getting uh, the first and second level filled with balls and then getting on the platform and climbing. So um, I think for a team of twelve kids and considering uh, three quarters of my team was seniors last year and graduated. Um, I think that we've done a great job with what we've had, and I'm excited to see how we do this weekend. Um, but in reality, in, uh, what I really want to go in deep to is Strike Zone. Um, I think that Strike Zone has shocked the world this year, in my opinion. They came off of last year's season with, with a great robot that, um, you know, was out in the finals at um, Troy with uh, Engine Nerds. And um, when they come into this year and everyone, they drop the reveal video, everyone's saying, hey, this is going to be a good robot. This is going to be a good robot. They come out of Kentwood. They solo 10 rockets. They pick the two-time world champions just to lose in the finals for the second most combined high score of the, of the entire competition. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't even know what to say because I'm, su I'm surprised with that robot because everything – we all, you know, when my team designs, we always try and resemble something, you know, what can we make that would be the best at this game? You know, how can we bring down the cycle time and stuff? And we actually, um, we powder coated at strike zone shop, uh, strike zone shop this year. So as soon as we saw that idea, I was like, hands down, that robot's going to kill it this year. So I think they're doing a great job and I'm super stoked to see what they bring out at MSC. Um, so I don't know if you, Sky, you want to go ahead and talk about Strike Force a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll just to finish off with uh, Strike Zone. There, they were an absolute, or Strike Zone, to, uh, they were an absolute joy to work with uh, when we played with them at uh, East Kentwood. Uh, but as far as Strike Force is concerned, and uh, a couple people chimed in on on chat there, the, thinking that they were missing from the list. Uh, every every event we played at so far, we've been playing to the top of that robot, the top tier of that robot at that event and we keep on finding ways to to bump it up uh but it has been disappointing uh exits i mean there's a bit of a a stigma around uh strike force now with uh doing well on uh, playing the game a little bit uniquely and uh well i i personally don't think we've hit the peak yet and i i hope that uh chat uh chimes in and, and says what they have to say about uh, Strike Force being at their peak. Uh, but uh, looking forward to uh, when divisions drop and see who we get to uh, play with and hopefully who we get to uh, make alliances with. And uh, let's uh, talk about, let's see what Freddie has to talk about. You know, I see all you guys in chat after seeing our top 10, a lot of outrage, and I hear your cries. <laughs> you must be thinking, where is the decency? Where is... The fully freeze. Now, flare. The fully flare. 910, the fully flare. Where's the decency for the fully freeze? Well, I'm asking the same question. Where is the decency? 910 has improved at every single competition they've been at. They were quarter finalists at Centerline, they were finalists at Troy, and they won Forest Hills. They got the dub. I think 910, they've been improving every competition. Their auto is. Pretty close to being spot on. Their drivers have cooled down a lot. Fully freeze. They've cooled down. <laughs> and I think that they're here to stay for MSC. 910. Keep an eye on them. They're an awesome robot, awesome drive team. I think uh I think they're gonna do really well here at MSC. You might as well just say that they're gonna freeze the competition, Freddie. Yeah. You could say they're gonna freeze the competition out. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> Could say they were stopping their opponents cold. There's your throwback to their old motto before we decided it was not GP enough. That's a there true statement. Is. That's a real story that happened. Was <laughs> we were told that motto was not graciously professional enough, so we changed it. Um, <laughs> so but, there's my nine ten rant, guys. So there's my nine ten. So there's there's your nine ten fun fact of the day. But uh, so yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I think nine ten is gonna do great. So I'm gonna mention another team. Uh, we sort of we began this discussion yesterday between Freddie Sky and myself. Um, so actually, we're gonna go boom, boom, boom down the uh, down the swerve teams in the state because I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna mention 1918, who we had at number one on our on our list, and it's crazy to me that people aren't talking about them more. 
Like, I get it. Yeah, I think they were bounced in semifinals at their first event. But their second event, you know, at East Kentwood, which was the hardest event in FIM this year to win, them and two with 54 put up monster points and were just able to just dominate that competition. I shouldn't say dominate. But so they're probably the best swerve bot in the state. Yeah. Um, I would say we had this like up there with your other options. Like, you know, there's 918, 910 is up there. We just talked about 2767 is obviously in the contention. Um, so there are a lot of good swerve robots. So it's really interesting. Uh, somebody in chat said, watch 910 draw 1918 in divisions and win. I would love to see that. I'd love to see them drive. Uh, like, sort of see how those two play together. They're going to be so dynamic. They're going to be bouncing off each other and getting each other's way. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, fair. I mean, the, the cool thing is there's so many good swerve teams this year, right? I mean, it's, yeah. like, that's two, right? But there's, like, you could pair up another two that would be yeah. epic, right? So, so, yeah, 35, Nick, 36, 3707. There's yeah, so many swerves. Says, says Nick, who did not make a swerve this year. That's true. That's true. But, uh... So I'm going to toss it back to Nick, and I think he's going to talk about a scene he's already mentioned a little bit. Uh, so, Nick, who's uh, next on your that you're watching out for at uh, MSC? Yeah, so, I mean, we kind of talked about how we're going to take turns picking out one team at a time. It's almost kind of like a draft. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited that, you know, I get to talk about 35-38 now that no one somehow talked about them yet. So, I mean, <laughs> what can you say? I mean, they, they did the same thing, almost the exact same thing we did this year, right? So we won their, you know, they won the two events with us at um, Southfield and Alpena too. But then they also went and won Gold Lake as well as the, uh, as, as the number one seed. So they've just been destroying. And, you know, I got to see them firsthand this weekend practicing a bunch. They're even faster than they've been in any of their districts this year now. They've really upped their, their game on everything. Um, I believe they've made their climber faster now too. Um, and the climber was already super reliable. You know, they've had one of the most reliable climbs all season in Michigan. So, I mean, I think they're incredibly dangerous. They had a great season last year. I think that I think last year kind of became their coming out party in a lot of ways as far as being with one of the new top competing teams in Michigan. And now this is just going to be a continuation of that. Um, and I think they get even more, definitely more dangerous than they were last year. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know what else you guys want to add on to that, but I think they're definitely one of the most dangerous teams. So it, it'll be interesting to see what division they're in and with who else they can possibly pair up with. I think one of the cool things about both them and you is you guys have had a lot of practice playing against defense, more more than some of the other top end teams. Just because of the events you've played at, it's like, how are we going right. to beat them? Well, there's no way we can outscore them, right? Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's kind of been the knock, you know, against us and also that, that they've kind of felt some of that, too, is that, well, you guys both played at, you know, easier events uh, than maybe some others like Kentwood. And I think that's definitely true. But but like to your point, you know, a lot of those events that we were at, you know, and they were at kind of had a lot more of the, you know, just the drive kit chassis with a bunch of weight on it. You know, the box chassis that all they're doing is playing defense because they're not they're not able to play any offense. And so, yeah, so I think they, just like us, they had a lot of defense played against them. And I think they've shown, especially at Alpina too, they faced it a lot in eliminations and they did a phenomenal job at still putting up nine, 10 game objects in teleop, which, you know, is, is pretty astounding compared to when you watch some other teams out there in the world play against some heavy defense. So I think if they continue to do that and, and they are as good as the practice has kind of been that they've had over the last week or so, um, I think they're, they're super dangerous. So watch out for them. Uh, I guess that moves us to Mike. That's going to be your next pick now. So who do you want to talk about next? Uh, divisions are out. <laughs> are they really? Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Somebody just posted a Here link. Here we go. Chat. Here we go, <laughs> boys. So, uh, we called it in the middle. We called it. Oh, yeah, they're out. Oh. The link. Yeah. I've got yeah, Dow. Well, I've got Dow, so now I can find the other ones. Uh, okay, yeah. somebody posted Dow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll do... I, I'm going to talk about 2054 while you guys. Well, while well, we scramble. <laughs> yeah. So, so 2054 yeah. is one of those really cool teams that that they are just playing really smooth, and it does not look like they're wasting any time in their cycle. They showed it really well. They're basically finishing the rocket, and and they just pushed through defense. Like they didn't get defended a ton because everybody was defending 1918 uh, in in at East Kentwood, but man, they just like they just shove robots, and that's why it seems like 1918 would be the easier one to defend, but. Um, I spent a bunch of time benchmarking them because I'm. I was thinking, man, that robot is like they're scoring a ton of points, but it doesn't look. Nothing about that robot looks like it's going to put up a ton of points. Have we been uh, lied to? Yeah, we got lied to again. 
We got oh, no. So, so I think, uh, I'm I literally think... telling you guys, it says 2018 in the link. Oh so my why god! You, why are you getting all excited when it says 2018? People no right. to me. If right. you drop what a link it? in chat one more right. time, whoever, get... whoever oh, posts that link, you might get timed chat. out if you're not careful. So, yikes! Oh, all right. got our just, just accept you got owned and move on. Yeah. I'll own that one. The oh, second we got time. owned. But there's That's... no decency. Where's the decency? <laughs> all right. Sorry to interrupt, Mike's inspiring. Sorry, <laughs> Mike. So, yeah, 2054, super smooth robot. I, I'm curious where they can improve. Uh, because, it, look, watching their cycles, it doesn't look like there's a lot of time to take out. But, I mean, it could just be drive practice and it gets faster. And, and to, they don't need to improve much to be a really good competitor at MSC. They're already really good. So, I, I think they're going to be one of the top picks in their division, if divisions ever come out. <laughs> uh, Nick, what do you got? Yeah, um, I guess I'm jumping on the Lapeer train. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little about 1684. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's hard because I saw 1684 at Marysville. Um, I saw him at Kettering, and I think that just progressively, there was one of those teams that are always fighting. They're always trying to get better in. Um, you know, I saw uh, that at um traverse city they got the two hatch down uh, i know that they do one on the cargo ship for sure and the one on the rocket i don't know if they got the two rocket one down uh so if someone in chat knows that they got that if you want to go ahead and say that um but they're always you know there's there's always just one of those teams that like you know when you get your match schedule and you're at a competition with them you know you're always like oh i hope you get a match with chimeras i hope i get a match with chimeras and I think that they're one of those teams that can really come out at MSC and peak right there and just be like, hey, we're here, you know. And um, I think Lapeer, just in period, between Strike Zone and Chimeras, they're coming out of nowhere and taking everybody uh, taking everybody by storm. And I, th I expect to see great things out of them. Um, so, Sky, what do you got next? Yeah, so I'm going to toss 17-18 uh, uh, out there. Uh, the Fighting Pie. So they have two wins this year, Gibraltar and Troy, and they also have a, a chairman's. But what I'm interested in seeing is their floor mechanism, because that is something that is not big in uh, the whole uh, paradigm of the game right now. Uh, and if they're able to get things working quick with that, uh, they could potentially save themselves an awful lot of time. Uh, so we'll see how that comes into play. Um, I'm I'm really hoping that uh, we can see some uh, cool cycles with them with that. And they also, uh, they were doing double climb. They're one of the only teams who's been doing double climbs in Elims in Michigan. They were uh, with 51 in the finals and Elims at Troy. They were double, they were climbing to level three together. So that's so, uh, a lot of that's, potential there. Yeah. That's yeah. And, they, and I think they can do it pretty fast, which I think, really, yeah. like, you know, like you guys pointed out earlier with the triple climb, I think it's super important. So if they're yeah. pulling that off reliably and then that makes them extra, um, you know, dangerous compared to some of the other teams. For sure. All right. So, Freddy. Uh, yes. You know, I got to admit, I was a denier of uh, 2075 Enigma Robotics for a while. After their first competition, I said, well, you know, it was a fairly weak event that they played at. Let's see how they, let's see how they play against some real competition. Am I right? <laughs> well, this past weekend at Forest Hills, we certainly saw them play against some very real competition. And they didn't win, and they did have a couple breakdowns, but they played great. They had, uh, I think they had a couple full rockets, or at least they got very close a couple times. And you wouldn't think, you wouldn't, it doesn't look like it through their picture on uh, the Blue Alliance if you look at it, but that is a really cool robot. <laughs> I just, I, I honestly don't really know what else to say. Um, they're just a really good robot, and I think that they can make a run at MSC. All right, for sure. Before I talk about my next team, uh, I think it's about time to start our giveaway uh, for the 4130 shirts generously donated oh, by yes. the um, by Nick and his team. So uh, I'm going to – the uh, keyword – that's the word I was looking for. The keyword for the giveaway is going to be F, uh, MSC Hype. Uh, one word. Uh, so go ahead, type that in chat. You know, get yourself in for the drawing. Uh, we will pick the winners later in the show. So go ahead and spam chat with that. 
And don't forget, Chad, uh, you do need to make sure you click that follow button if you'd like to be eligible to win uh, the t-shirt. And if you'd like to have five times luck, help support the stream. You can do so for free with Twitch Primer for just a few bucks a month, and you'll get 5x chance to win. So good luck, everybody. We're going to draw uh, twice in a row for two different shirts. All right, awesome. And then, so uh, for my team, I'm going to take our first, I'm going to do my first, uh, our first spicy team of the night just because they're a team I've enjoyed watching and I think that they uh, they might surprise people they've been getting better and I just love them as people so they get talked about and I'm actually going to talk about 4680 real fast the Aztec Eagles out of Detroit uh, they've been improving consistently for years they've been getting better and better uh, this year they've done phenomenally uh, they've got a pretty consistent level 3 climb which could help them in the rankings uh, they haven't gone to the the harder competitions this year they have gone to you know Southfield and Detroit were not particularly deep events, but I do give them a chance to. I want to see them play at the big level. They have done. They have done well at MSC in the past, so I just wanted to. Uh, I want to give them a quick shout out because I love them and they're really nice and they deserve to be at least talked about after the phenomenal season they've had. So uh, Nick, who do you want to talk about next? Well, just to just to cap off forty six eighty. I mean, to to credit them, they're they've had a really reliable climb all year. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's proven to be incredibly important. You know, even some of the best teams, if they haven't had a reliable climber, it can really sink you. And and they definitely did good analysis on that to make sure that they put a high priority on that. So props to them on, you know, doing good strategic analysis on that. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking out pretty from my view right now because my, my third team, I'm going right down the rankings. You know, I've got, I've got the number one and two and I'm just going to move on to number three because I can't pass up good old dirty swerve. Dirty swerve. Um, I mean, we are talking about great swerve robots this year, and there's a lot. It seems like in Michigan this year, really swerve has kind of exploded um, to a lot of really good teams. But, I mean, this is not their first year doing it, and they kind of got a name for it last year. They did really well last year. Um, and so this is kind of solidifying them now as, as kind of a steady team. And they, they're, once again, really great. I think specifically on cargo, they can really just pound on the cargo ship and then really fill in cargo just everywhere. Um, and their hatch play really is, is picked up, I think, from the beginning of the season. Um, so, I, you know, I think they have a lot of potential. Uh, I know they added a – I believe they added a suck. They added a suck climb, I think, uh, suck. right? And that is – that's now working uh, reliably from my understanding. So, you know, if that's continuing to be reliable at States, then I think that really starts to move them into the top tier of whatever division they end up being in as a high contender to seed well. Um and it's just more practice and everything. So I think they could definitely be a challenger to, to definitely win their division and, and do some damage on Fimstein. So that would definitely be a high-level pick for me. Uh, Mike, who is going to be your next team you want to talk about? Uh, I wanted to bring up 27. Of um, course you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to bring up 37 of 7, and Nick beat me to it. So, um my uh gotta be quicker than that <laughs> yeah uh so yeah 27 they have a really cool arm this year it has a lot of high potential and and they just haven't realized that potential yet um they they won an early event by being by being the best robot early on um and and they looked really good at kentwood but uh that hatch mechanism didn't cut it in 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 elims um and like i've said before it it has a ton of potential and it can get there and they're really good at playing under defense so they are definitely going to be a contender um, we'll just see how well it executes. It all comes down to execution. Nick, what do you got? Yeah, um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up 302, the Dragons. Um, these are one of the teams that always compete out of state um, at Miami Valley. They went and won Miami Valley again, came into Jackson, won Chairman's, uh, lost in the quarters in a rubber that, in my opinion, I think that they could have won with Jacktown Vectors. Came into Marysville. Um, me and PJ were both there. I think PJ can agree with me that their level of play extremely increased. Um, their floor hatch mech's working. They're great at cargo. Um, I think that they're one of the teams that could have potentially fill a rocket at MSC. And um, I, I don't know. I just I think I got a good feeling about that team. And I think that they're going to come out of the woodworks and uh, really take a lot of people by storm. I think that they're one of the teams that – might sleep on some people, but if you look at the numbers, their numbers are there. And uh, I'm excited to see what they bring out on MSC, and hopefully the divisions draw in a good way, and we see them on Finsteins. That would be one of my teams that I would like to see there. Um, so, Sky, what do you got? So, I'm going to bring up the engine nerds here. Uh, they've 
had a lot of practice at this point. Uh, they just got done with uh, with Forest Hills, uh, where they went through that and uh, managed to get the W with 9-10. So I'll be them in some relatively close matches. Uh, but as far as a team that just knows how to get things uh, done and, and keeps on building year to year to year, or uh, event to event to event, uh, they've got they've got that one figured out. So um, I'm looking for a, a very robust. Uh, and um, maybe a little bit on the aggressive side of play from them. So it should be fun to watch. Well, I, you know, one of the number one developments that I'm interested in seeing at uh, MSC is how well do cargo ship specialists play? What kind of role are they going to play this week here at Saginaw Valley State? 51, Hall of Fame team, the Wings of Fire. They are certainly a cargo ship specialist to look at. Uh, they, are, they also have a very solid level three climber. They they won uh, sorry they won first in Michigan Troy with the Fighting Pie, and they are certainly a team to look at. I I definitely think you can peg them as a dark horse candidate. Um, they're not really a, a team that you think about that often when you're thinking about the top teams in the state, but they are certainly up there. So 51, the Wings of Fire. Remember the name. I honestly, honestly think they can go either way. They, they're either going to win their division, or they're going to be out in quarters. That's my hot take. But <laughs> if they don't get out in quarters, fifty-one. Uh, remember the name, Wings of Fire. You can see on the video, just a really solid cargo ship, uh, cargo ship specialist. Yeah, um, I'm going to take for my team another team that showed um, some early success this year. Hasn't played since week. Three, I believe, was the last time they played, and that's going to be ten twenty three. The Bedford oh, Express. Dang. Yeah, yeah, that's oh. right. <sighs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to take ten twenty three yeah. because uh, their team, like, they came out super strong at week one with lightning fast cycles, uh, ranking first and winning Gibraltar, and then at Jackson, uh, they were rank one actually, and then finalists uh, losing out to their alliance partners from that week one fourteen eighty one, uh, but they're one of the faster robots this year. Another one that has been, they could do the rocket. They can go high, but perceives in their play so far this year has preferred to go low um, and do cargo ship just because they, their speed is amazing. Uh, so definitely uh, Bedford is one to keep an eye on. Um, definitely one who I think will do super well at States, whether they continue to play low or whether they switch to more of a rocket based game. So Nick, now that I stole your pick, who are you going to talk about? You did steal my pick, so now I'm scrambling a little bit. Um, well, you know what? I'll just do this, because I'm nothing if not a man of the people. And uh, I've seen the chat quite a bit mentioning 3656, and I think that is a good take at this point. Um, the Dreadbots, they, they've had a lot of success this season. Uh, they won their first event at Belleville, and then they were finalists up at Lincoln. Um so not not two of the most contentious events, but I think they have a lot of potential. Um, if they've made some improvements since uh, Lincoln, which was uh, yeah, week four was uh, Lincoln. So I've had a few weeks now between that and MSC. So if they've made kind of any improvements or anything, um, I think they could be a you know kind of more like a not I wouldn't I mean you can't really be a dark horse when you're a finalist and winner. But, you know, depending on the division, they could be a little bit of a sleeper. Um, but I think they could definitely do some damage and, and jump up and get you um, if they've if they've kind of improved continuously from where they were at when they last competed. So I would say look out for them. Okay. All right, Mike, who you got? Mike, Mike, Mike. is muted. So, um, well, Call Justin, so, <laughs> we'll just skip I, to Nick. We'll just Mike, you back. I'm back. I'm good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on the Thunder Chickens. Um, Come on, Mike. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nick's gonna be mad at me because I, yeah. Uh, I had a line <laughs> planned in everything. Leave Thunder Chicken Green. I'm taking 217. How dare you? Um, All right. So Mike, uh, go ahead. So, talk. So Thunder Chickens were another team that that struggled early on, right? And they uh they really seem to have gotten it together this uh this last um th like Marysville they they were doing really well, right? So and and it's a high potential robot too. They just um, they had some early struggles at Kettering and then and then at Finger Lakes with uh, with two quarterfinals exit and, and I think they have it they'll they'll be really good at MSC though um, well, you got anything to add Nick <laughs> you know I, I was at Marysville too so I know that uh, chickens had some rough uh, competitions at Finger Lakes and a quick exit at Kettering but um, 
They're the Thunder Chickens. They're never disappointing. They're always coming out and swinging. Uh, no one expected them to win Newton in 2016, and they did. So, I mean, uh, I expect great things out of them. But since Mike stole my pick, uh, I'm going to jump back to the Marysville competition because I like Marysville because that's my home competition. Uh, I'm going to take 2050, uh, 2851 Crevolution. Um, there's not a whole lot to say. I, I think that they're a great uh, a great hatch bot and another team that we can see easily filling Rockets. Um, they were – you know, if not one ball away uh, from filling the rocket multiple times at Marysville. So um, I'm expecting great things out of Crevolution and, you know, good for them. And hopefully they're one of the teams that gets on Fimstein's. Uh, Sky, what do you got? Yeah, so I'm going to go with a bit of a uh, spicy one here. I'm going to go with 6090, uh, the Wayland Wildcats. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm doing that, uh, well, I mean, I've seen them in person. Uh, and I think they have a lot of potential still, uh, particularly as a hatchbot. Uh, running quick cycles back and forth to the rocket. I mean, they have a few things they need to sort out, uh, but they haven't been dropping very many hatches from what from what I saw. Uh, and I think their their cap uh, for speed um, is is uh, still up there quite a ways. Awesome, awesome. You right, know, right, Freddie. It's funny, Sky, that you should mention the word speed because <laughs> thirty five forty two speed. Is another, they are honestly the biggest dark horse candidate in my eyes, arguably, in the state. They uh, they actually won, Kettering won with 27 rush. I was going to say, hard to be a sleeper when you win. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It was a week one event. A lot of people forget about week one events at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how 35-42 speed, uh, they're only semifinalists at uh, Lincoln. So I'm really interested to see how they play out. In fact, I think that if they get in a really stacked division, they could create a really strong 7th or 8th line as either a captain first or second pick and maybe make some noise in the competition. So 35-42 speed is going to be my next uh, my next draft pick, if you will. All right. And then uh, for mine, and this is probably going to be our last one that we'll rattle off some things real fast. This is um, my last. I'm going to do a double pick. Because there's two teams I think we need to wow. talk about. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's not it's, fair. I'm going to talk about probably the two best teams from the Upper Peninsula this year. Because they do not get enough love up there. So first is going to be Team 6569, the Gladiators from Antonagon. Uh, I learned how to say that <laughs> yesterday. Antonagon. Yeah, I learned that one yesterday. Who uh, have won both their district events this year. And then uh, their alliance partner at, I believe, uh, both. Oh, no at one of those events, and then uh, the team they face off against in finals, 4391, the Brave Bots out of Gladwin. Um, Gladstone, sorry. Probably the two best UP teams we have uh, coming down to MSC. Uh, the Upper Peninsula has not traditionally made the best showing at uh, MSC just because the competitions aren't as dense up there, so they don't necessarily have the practice time. But last year, we did get our first team from the Upper Peninsula to win, MSC. And I think one of these two could be on an alliance that could help really contribute and uh, uh, cause and, and win Fimstein if they, if they play it right. So I just wanted to, give the, I wanted to give the UP some love. We've talked about pretty much everywhere else in the state, so I wanted to make sure we got them. Uh, so now we're just like rapidly going to go through some teams well, who we have. <laughs> well, so PJ, let's, why don't we, why don't we hit some chairmans and, and, uh, you know, yeah. engineering inspiration stuff. And then maybe yeah. we can head okay, back to yeah. that. That's true. I forgot that that's an award. Okay. So quickly, uh, some chairman's, uh, contenders. There's not very many, uh, teams that have actually won at the state level before. In fact, only one repeating team, two, two repeating teams from last year of uh, the, for my favorites going in, I think torque who's won in 2015 and last year, 2018 has to be one of the favorites. Uh, 503, I think, is back yeah. on the chairman's map. Uh, 66, perennial favorite recently. Uh, and then 33 as well has to be in that conversation. I know they're pushing hard for it this year. And then uh, some of my chairman slash culture dark horses. Uh, 3655, the tractor technicians. They beat out like 1718, the flying toast. Some really strong chairman's teams at their first event to get that chairman's award. So they're doing something right. And then uh, 302 is my pick also to either get chairman's or potentially EI because they did get that culture wombo combo this year. Uh, 226 also has to be in the conversation. So, uh, everybody, you while we draw for the winner, uh, or the two winners, I should say, uh, let's see, our, our fast team list. Uh, <laughs> we've got everybody, everybody's been adding to this in the chat teams that we didn't get a chance to talk about. <laughs> we've got 
I mean, in our dock, we, we got 50-50 Cowtown. We got 34-52, the Green Engineers, 43-62, Gems, 36-88, Norsemen, 245, the Atom Bots, uh, 33-57, the Comets, uh, World Championship finalists we didn't talk about, 21-37, Torque. Um, we didn't talk about 36-41, the Flying Toasters, 10-25, Impy, 52-05, Yeetbot. Uh, it's... This is a stack that we could talk for another hour and still. Four ninety four Martians. Four ni- uh, yep. Yeah. Martians. One, one of the eleven remaining teams the, that has yes. made every single state championship since its yep. inception. So we lost one of the twelve. I think, which actually, PJ, you predicted uh, yes. week one, right? I, I certainly did. I picked the wrong team, but I did. <laughs> so that. I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know, somebody was going to say something. Yeah, well, really quick. Like I said, I mean, like like Nick said before we got on the air, I mean, this is the top 160 teams in the best state in the country. So no matter what we do, we're going to miss teams. So we're just trying to do our best out here. But the best thing I can tell you is get on the stream. If you can get to Saginaw Valley State University, get there. It's going to be an awesome show, and I hope to see everyone come out this weekend. All right. So now One let's – One last thing. Oh. I'm seeing a spam in the chat. Robo dogs hype, man. Robo dogs hype. Yeah, that would, require, that would require Except, them to make MSC. I don't think we have any Robo dogs at MSC. <laughs> that so we unfortunately, cannot machine. cheer for well, Robo dogs. We have twenty seven seventy one stray dogs. So, so but, <laughs> all right. So sure, let's sure. Uh, let's go ahead and draw for our two winners because we're running out of time uh, before our uh, we're going into top twenty five. So uh, Tyler, if we can do that. Yep. So we're gonna go ahead and draw once again. Uh, thanks again to uh, Nick Jr. and uh, forty one thirty for giving away the awesome. Uh, shirts that they are doing uh, for tonight. Don't forget the uh, keyword was MSC Hype. So we're going to do two separate drawings. First one is going to be uh, Spider Connor. Congratulations, Spider Connor. Uh, just a reminder, by the way, if you win, please make sure you shoot first updates now. A uh, private message either on Twitch or in our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now with your uh, first name, last name, mailing address, zip code. I can't believe I still have to say this, but I had two winners yesterday. I still have to tell this too. So uh, so make sure you do that uh, for uh, the T-shirt. And then the second winner is going to be uh, Cats Ugly 66. So, oh, my. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> we always Good. get better and better screen names, you each, each time each time every time <laughs> so congratulations you guys like tyler said send him your info if you don't send info you won't get the shirt because we can't magically get it to you so unfortunately uh, i will we're... say real quick though uh nick jr are you going to be uh at championships or do you not know yet i'll be at msc and i'll be at detroit champ so if you just want to wait till then i can give it to you yeah. um, if for some reason you want one of those t-shirts i have about 40 sitting in a box right now so um <laughs> you can find me uh, i'll be i'm on fun discord or um Come find 4130 at MSC and hopefully the cha- uh, championship, and I'll have some there. So uh, don't be afraid to come ask for them. Yep, and our Discord link is in chat now. So if you're not in our Discord, join the over 1,600 people now that are, and come uh, talk about more fun shows and just random stuff. We keep it very clean in our uh, Discord, uh, not like some of the other uh, Reddits and stuff you might find. So uh, come join us and, like I said, talk some robots and talk about MSC. Yeah, so um, definitely, like Nick mentioned, uh, I think – all six of us are going to be at MSC this weekend in various capacities, um, either with teams or I'll be refereeing. Uh, I believe uh, Freddie's volunteering as well. Everybody else, I assume, will be with their teams. But we'll all be there. Definitely come and say hi if you see us, either at States or at Worlds. We'd love to say hi. Uh, we're hopefully going to get a chance to go around and talk to you guys, maybe film some videos. Uh, so we'd love to see you. And unfortunately, we're going to have to stop here and wrap the show up. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's watched, sent us questions and comments, and supported the show. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask you to let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Be sure to click that little green follow button above and click the purple sub button to see if you maybe have a free Twitch Prime sub available. On behalf of myself, Freddie, Sky, Mike, both Nicks, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show coming up in just a couple minutes is the FRC Top 25. Uh, you'll get to see where some Michigan teams finished up hopefully in there from uh, the week six voting. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in and we will uh, hopefully see you all this weekend. Bye out guys. Bye. We need your help to keep fun loud, live and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates. Now you can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.